Elden Ring. Oh, Elden Ring. I love Elden Ring. Like many people, I would say this was probably my pick for Game of the Year. With its character design, storytelling, dynamic combat, and movement controls, it truly feels like the culmination of all the best things we've seen from Soft Produce over the years. However, there is at least one glaring flaw, the PvP. When details about Elden Ring were announced leading up to its release, there were a number of people who expressed concerns over these changes to the multiplayer formula, and in some ways it appears those fears were not completely unwarranted. Basically, it's very simple. Aside from the odd NPC invaders, players can only be invaded if they summon help in co-op. Seems simple, right? Good guess, but actually no. This issue, in my opinion, and probably some others, was unfortunately brought upon the community by itself. Soulsborne PvP scenes can often be divisive, intimidating, and even downright toxic. I don't think it's unreasonable to say that probably what's turned so many potential players off in the past was even the very presence of PvP. Newbies who might be interested in the story and campaign, but just don't want to have to deal with invasions. For prime examples of this, I encourage you to check out the streams and VODs from the lovely Miss Shempai. I, however, enjoy PvP, for the most part. However, I can understand why many people would feel hesitant. I don't wish to generalize, but it does sometimes feel like too often the types of people to complain about people not wanting PvP in the game tend to be tryhards who only ever engage in invasions and hate blue phantoms with a passion. I know that's probably an unfair generalization, but that tends to be the air that these parts of the community tend to convey. And it is unfortunately this kind of stuff that led to From changing the formula. Between tryhards, trolls, and even just straight up cheaters, it makes it difficult for the franchise to attract new players. But while this may have solved some of the issues with the atmosphere of Elden Ring PvP, it has created a whole host of new ones as well. The number one problem, in my opinion, the player limit when applied to the open world setting. Too often when invading, it's really easy to find oneself going up against unfair three-man gank squads. And with everyone and their dog running a cheese build, these encounters are almost impossible. And it's easier now than ever for people to set up ambushes like this because the open world environment provides so many viable staging grounds. See, I actually wouldn't mind going up against a 1v3 if it's people actually playing the game. Say I invade a three-man squad in the Halig Tree. It's not me versus three. That's the three of them against me with the entire zone of enemies at my back. That feels more than fair. However, when it's just three guys on a hill spamming Rivers of Blood, Elden Stars, Stars of Ruin, and more, it's not fun and it's not fair. Many people will talk about how invaders aren't entitled to fairness, and to some degree I agree with that. But when your prospective target isn't even playing the game, and it feels like it's literally designed to be a meat grinder for you, after a certain point it just doesn't feel worth it. I believe there's a way to avoid slash fix this, but I'll get to that in a minute. So, with all these questions in people's minds about the state of PvP, I took to the subreddits with a very simple poll. Which From game do you feel has the most balanced PvP? I only really posted this to the Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne, and Elden Ring subreddits because I felt that would get me the data I needed without spreading myself too thin. And I discovered something interesting about people's reactions to these polls. I honestly should have seen this coming and probably could have phrased my question differently. But I feel I got the results I needed in the end. 
My definition of balance is different from many of theirs. Where most of the replies to the poll seem to be thinking in terms of weapon build versus weapon build balance, I was thinking more in terms of the overall user experience balance of PvP as a feature of the game. Naturally, the Bloodborne Reddit showed bias towards its own title, with DS3 coming in a very close second. This is pretty much what I expected. What surprised me were the other two. In the DS3 subreddit, DS3 got around 51% of the votes, and DS2 came in second, leaving my beloved Bloodborne with a mere 10.64%. Damn. And even in the Elden Ring subreddit, while it was much more of an even spread there, Dark Souls 3 and 2 took the first and second places respectfully, with Elden Ring being third? Seriously? And Bloodborne in fourth? Okay. Someone needs a sauce beer up their pork hole. But seriously, it's interesting... Unfortunately, like many people, I'm not a big fan of DS2, so I can't really speak about its PvP. I understand many people felt like it's where magic truly shined prior to Elden Ring, but beyond that, I don't really have any personal experience to form an opinion on. So instead, let's examine how multiplayer works in these games, and why I personally feel Bloodborne has the most balanced PvP implementation in all of FromSoft. Dark Souls 1 operates on the player being in one of two states, human and hollow. You can invade people to steal their humanity, which of course, being human, makes you a target for invaders. Dark Souls 1 makes it difficult for players to just stay in a hollow state by making it so that you have to be human in order to kindle bonfires and thus increase your Estus refill. And, of course, being human allows one to summon other players for co-op. Dark Souls 2, if memory serves, is rather similar, except now the initiative to go human is your dwindling life bar. Invade or assist another player to gain humanity, or risk losing half of your health bar to hollowing. Then, finally, in Dark Souls 3, we now meet the unkindled Ashen One. No longer a mere hollow, we use embers to give ourselves a little extra boost to our maximum health and the ability to summon cooperators. In Dark Souls 3, there's many different ways to be invaded, including normal invaders, mad spirits, forest watchdogs, and Aldrich faithfuls. Now, we come to Bloodborne. Let me break down exactly how PvP works in Bloodborne. In the first starting zones, you are completely safe from invaders, even in co-op. However, if you yourself have engaged in an invasion, opening yourself to multiplayer will spawn a bell-ringing woman who will beckon invaders to your world. In later zones, even if you haven't invaded, the bell woman will still show up if you beckon a cooperator. And then, of course, there's the Nightmare Realms, where the bell-ringing woman spawns instantly in single-player, opening you to invasions in those zones from the start. To me, this is the optimal balance of experience between those who want PvP and those who don't. It eases you into co-op PvP by making the starting zones safe, and even in later zones, if you don't want invasions, you just have to kill the bell woman. You have the ability to turn invasions off, you merely have to earn it. And she's usually pretty easy to find, too, due to the constant fucking bell she's clanging on. And on top of all this, please do correct me in the comments if I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure the player limit in PvP caps at two cooperators with the player and two invaders. This is brilliant, if you ask me, and if Elden Ring had handled PvP like this, things would have been so much better for both PvPers and PvEers. And the crazy thing is, Elden Ring already has what it needs to do this thematically. Here's my rundown of how I think PvP should have been done for Elden Ring. 
Invasions are caused by spirit summoner snails. Invasions can be ceased by finding and slaying the snail wherever it hides. In Limgrave, Weeping Peninsula, and Liernia, no snails will spawn unless you engage in an invasion there. White Mask Vare is open for business, after all. Pretty much every zone after that, including the underground sections, summoning a cooperator will spawn at least one snail somewhere. Legacy dungeons, such as Stormvale, Rhea Lucaria, Castle Morn, etc., will also spawn a snail in co-op. At least two zones are prime candidates for single-player invasions, and that's Moog's zone with his bloody fingers, and the Volcano Manor with Rykard's recusants. These areas would already have a snail spawned when you enter their boundaries. Next is player limits. Here's how it should go. You activate a Taunter's Tongue or summon one cooperator, one invader. You summon two cooperators or Taunter's Tongue with one cooperator, two invaders. And obviously blue phantoms count as cooperators for these limits. I personally feel this would drastically cut down on the issue of gank squads. A 2v3 may still technically be outnumbered, but it feels way more fair than a forced 1v3. Also a quick note on the invader factions, if you can even call them that. Invader titles should determine friendly fire. Recusants would be incapable of harming other recusants, and same for Bloody Fingers. But, if a recusant and a Bloody Finger should invade the same world, they may choose to work together or not. And finally, a thought about the arenas. Lost had a very good point on the subject of duels. The duelist community has a set of self-imposed etiquette, which unfortunately doesn't work in Elden Ring as well as it did and might have in past games considering how much more damage players deal to each other. Duels are over so quick they're not as fun as they could be. Lost's suggestion was basically making arena fights best 2 out of 3 or something like that. I'll link his video down below. I'd like to go a step further and say that in addition to that, arena battles should let all combatants use their flasks, but with the allotment cut in half as if they were summons. Different modes could allow or disable the use of great runes. So you could still heal in arena battles, but your healing, you'll have to think carefully about how much healing you give yourself by determining the allotment of your flasks because it will be reduced. There won't be any hosts in arena battles, you see. I know there's probably no point pining for something like this, but I can't help but feel like it just would have made more sense for the game to be like this, as opposed to the frustrating, toxic environment we see now. Will PvP get better? I don't know. If From can open the arenas and do something about all these fucking AFK farmers, it might be passable. Unfortunately, many of the changes I'd like to see made are probably just too impractical to implement at this point in the game. Still, it's an amazing game, and there is fun to be had even in PvP, if you know where to look. So, until then, if anyone wants to fight me in Yarnum, just ring my bell, baby. Then we can enjoy a good, honest hunt. Cheers, Tarnished.